In January 2021, the United States of America will have its first silent generation president. The whole world is watching America. Technically, we did have a silent acting as president for two hours back in 2007, but more on that later. If the silence didn't make it this time, we might have never had a silent generation president. If you put every US president's birth year in order, you will find that the biggest gap is between 1924 in 1946. That's a 22-year period. Even if you aren't interested in the idea of generations, it's still notable. Biden's presidency will bring that gap down to 18 years. Even then, it will still be the largest gap, but will be tied with the gap between 1890 and 1908. This is relevant because of the unique impact of living during a certain time period, part of why we look at generations. The silent generation is thought to begin somewhere between 1925 and 1929, and the baby boomer generation is traditionally thought to start in 1946. So until now, we basically skipped right over the silence. Despite turning 78 and 2020, Biden is one of the younger silence. At this point, it's unlikely anyone born in the 1930s will ever become president of the United States. Even those born in 1939 will turn 85 in 2024. Replacing Trump, Biden will be America's oldest president. On that note, although our recent candidates have been older in age, and understandably people have reservations about that, it can be kind of reassuring and inspiring to see people still accomplishing huge things at an older age. All in all, the 2020 election has been a big one. In addition to electing its oldest president, the US also elected its first female and person of color vice president. And because Kamala Harris is married, that means we also have our first second gentleman. One reason I find this particularly interesting as it relates to silence is that if you look back in history, you will find that only members of the silent generation have chosen to run with female VPs. Walter Mondale with Geraldine Ferraro in 1984. Women represent about 52% of the U.S. population. They've been neglected by the major parties for too long. John McCain and Sarah Palin in 2008. And Joe Biden with Kamala Harris in 2020. Could it be the time period they grew up in? In this video, I'll be going over several topics relating to silence and politics in the United States. So see the timestamps in the description if you're interested in a specific topic. And by the way, on this channel, I cover a variety of topics, including things relating to the generations and over time topics and so on. So if you're interested, subscribe to see more. So before the 2020 election, did any other silence almost become president? Aside from Biden, four made it to a major party ticket. Five, if you include Ross Perot, who ran as an independent in 1992. While he didn't get any electoral votes, he did secure 18.9% of the popular vote, which is pretty significant uh, running as an independent. In the past, the silent closest to winning the presidency was John Kerry in 2004. The 1943 born silent ran against Bush in what was one of the closer elections in US history, though not quite like the 2000 election. The other silence who made it to a major party ticket were McCain, Mondale, and Dukakis. Born McCain lost to Obama in 2008. 1933 born Dukakis lost to George H.W. Bush in 1988. And Mondale lost to Reagan in 1984. The last two were considered landslide elections, particularly in the terms of the Electoral College. Guy slash British generation Ronald Reagan, who was the incumbent president at the time, actually took the most electoral votes in history. On a side note, aside from Perot McCain, all of the silent major party candidates ran on the Democrat ticket. Coincidence or representative of the generation? What do you think? We're only looking at six candidates, so it's probably hard. To say. Now, I didn't touch on anyone who initially ran for the party tickets because ultimately they were not as close to winning the presidency, but they have existed. Bernie Sanders, Jesse Jackson, Ron Paul, and Fred Thompson are examples. And I just wanted to say, who else is impressed by the energy of some of our older candidates and politicians in recent years? Now, if silence weren't presidents in the past, who were the presidents instead? So far, we've had seven presidents from the generation preceding the silence, the GI slash greatest generation, and four presidents from the following generation, the baby boomers. We haven't had a Gen X president yet, but they still have time. Now, keep in mind that the greatest slash GI generation is a long generation, so it makes sense that they might be a little overrepresented in that sense, but I'll touch more on that later. While we didn't have any definitively silent generation presence until now, let's talk about the presidents who work in the birth years closest to the silent generation. It's of course the presidents born in 1924 and 1946. Jimmy Carter and George H.W. Bush are the two born in 1924. They're not too far from the cutoff, so these two likely have some things in common with the generation. As I mentioned in my silent generation video, the silent moniker was originally applied to those in that sort of cusp area between the GIs and the silence, which one could argue Bush and Carter are at least close to, and so a lot of silent generation stereotypes may fit them as they tend to fit those born in that time period better. A couple fun facts about Carter, he is the longest lived president so far, and his wife is still alive, and his VP Mondale is still alive. On the other hand, we had three presidents, Bush, Clinton, and Trump, born in 1946, the first boomer year. I think that fact alone is pretty notable and may dive into it more in a future video. So what about positions outside the presidency? Have the silence been silently exerting their influence in other ways? Let's look at the VPs. Have we had silent vice presidents in the United States? We've had three. In comparison, we have had three boomer VPs, and we have another one coming up, and six greatest slash GIs. 
Our most recent silent VP, Biden actually, was VP during Obama's presidency, serving from 2009 to 2017. Silent Dick Cheney was born just one year before Biden in 1941 and served alongside Bush from 2001 to 2009. Some news outlets like BBC, NPR, and more have called him one of the more powerful vice presidents in the United States. Some also say Biden was actually quite influential such powerful, and you can find other things as well. But in a sense, you could say along with Biden, Cheney has had one of the larger roles as a silent in running the US. Cheney did technically serve as acting president for two hours when Bush was having his colonoscopy in 2007. But when people are talking about him, they're of course talking about the time outside of those hours as well. Cheney was also the only Republican silent who served as VP. Republican 1935 born Jack Kemp ran with Bob Dole, but lost. They weren't the only ones that lost though. Silent Geraldine Ferraro, born in 1935, was the first female vice presidential nominee representing a major party in the US. She was also the first Italian American and ran alongside fellow silent Walter Mondale. Her speech at the Democratic National Convention was considered one of the top 100 of the 20th century. America is the land where dreams can come true for all of us. Still, this is one of those landslide losses. In terms of electoral votes, Mondell and Ferraro only took Mondell's home state of Minnesota and DC. Speaking of Mondell, we already mentioned him earlier since he ran for president. Before that, he was on Jimmy Carter's presidential ticket, which did win, and so he served as vice president from 1977 to 1981. Though the two did run again, they lost the next election. So we had three silents who became VP and three who ran and lost. I mentioned Kemp and Ferraro, but Joe Lieberman is the other one who ran and lost. He was the VP on the ticket with Gore in 2000. He was also born in the 1940s, 1942 to be exact, so pretty close to Biden and Cheney. As a senator, Lieberman played a large role in creating the Department of Homeland Security. Now let's look at the position second in line to succeed the President of the United States, Speaker of the House. The current Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, is a silent. Born in 1940, Pelosi is the only woman who has ever served in that role, and is the highest ranking female elected official in U.S. history. That is until Kamala Harris becomes VP. So this is another first for women in U.S. history, made by a silent. The other one we talked about earlier was for are, interestingly, both Italian-American. Before Pelosi, there was extra Paul Ryan and Boomer John Boehner, and the previous silent speaker of the House comes before him. Dennis Hastert, born in 1942, was the longest serving Republican speaker of the House in U.S. history. He was also the highest ranking elected official in U.S. history to serve a prison sentence. The sentencing occurred after he was speaker of the House, and you can look into that more if you're interested. Preceding him, we had Newt Gingrich, and before that, there was a silent, well, really the first one, Tom Foley, born in 1929. Paul Ryan is the only Xer we've ever had, and John Boehner is the only Boomer we've ever had so far as Speaker of the House. So in that respect, one could almost argue that the Boomers are underrepresented in this area, but they still have plenty of time if they stay in politics as long as the uh, older Boomers in silence right now. Yeah, might as well cover Senate Majority Leaders as well. The generational representation is similar-ish. Five GIs, four silence, and two Boomers held the position of Senate Majority Leader in recent years. There is also one more, Howard Baker, who was born in 1925. Most would consider that to fall into the GI slash grade generation, but occasionally some people would put in the silence, so I just wanted to mention it separately, especially because he has some silent characteristics. One time, Nixon asked Baker to fill a Supreme Court justice position, and Baker took so long to decide that Nixon just chose for himself. That fits with the early silent stereotypes. On the other hand, Baker was an important part of the Senate Watergate Committee, and was the one to ask, what did the president know? and when did he know it? Mitch McConnell, the current Senate Majority Leader, was born in 1942, another 1942-er. He is the longest serving Republican in the position in history and is especially known for his filibusters and obstructionist methods. The other Senate Majority Leaders were Harry Reid, Trent Lott, and George J. Mitchell. Now one last area for something different, let's look at the Supreme Court Justices. To start off, I'll let you know what we have in the current court. We have three Xers, five Boomers, and one Silent. The Silent is Stephen Breyer. The Xers were all appointed within the past few years, and the current Boomers are all of the boomers who have ever been Supreme Court justices. Then we have six silence with the one currently in office. All of these silence, which include Breyer, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, David Souter, Anthony Kennedy, Antonin Scalia, and Sandra Day O'Connor were born in the 1930s. They were all born in the 1930s. This is in contrast from most of the other silence we've talked about who were born either in the late 1920s or early 1940s. O'Connor was the first female Supreme Court justice, yet another first made by a silent woman. Some say Scalia was particularly influential in creating a shift through interpretation methods, which he outlined in a book he co-authored, Brian A. Gardner. To finish off the representation, there were 13 GIs ranging from 1901 to 1924, with over half of them from the first decade of the 20th century. So, is the silent generation 
and representation, what we would expect. It would be difficult to determine precisely how many silence we would expect to be represented relative to other generations. One thing to take into account is that the number of years in each generation, at least of these three we're kind of looking at right now, they're not even. The GI generation is longer compared to uh, more recent generations we look at. Take these sample years for GIs through Xers to see representation by the number of years. And here it is without X. And since some people use different years, let's throw in Strauss and Howe's versions. They tend to be more different than some. Really, I think looking at the total population could be a better measure though. But again, it depends on how you would want to look at it. Because the silents were born during the Great Depression and World War II, less people were having babies in individual years compared to the baby boomers, for example, who literally are the post-war baby boom. So the silent generation is smaller in comparison to the greatest and the boomers. Here you can see how the number of births compare between the silence and the boomers using Pew years. Still, to get the full picture, you would also want to factor in life expectancy, especially considering things that might have affected people at certain stages of life, especially earlier, like war. Immigration, or lack thereof, and the age of immigrants could be important to roles outside of the presidency and vice presidency as well. Immigration was relatively low during the times the silence and boomers were born. Additionally, less women and minorities received the experience and education that would be expected in order to advance to these roles due to limitations in place, not to mention, let's just call it the overall culture of these pastimes. Thus, I would expect in the past we were potentially pulling from a different percentage of the population, primarily white men. So overall, at the least, it wouldn't be surprising to see less silence compared to boomers represented in politics, but it's really hard to pin down exactly what we would expect. Of course, that isn't even factoring in motivation to be involved in politics. But finally, let's remember that silence are older. As far as I'm aware, there's no age cap for the presidency or the other roles, but we're getting to a point where with each passing election, it is less likely we would see one as president and we're just less likely to see new silence entering politics. Thus, if we expected that boomers and silence would be equally represented in the long term, which we maybe don't, but let's just say we did, we would still possibly expect to see more silence at this point since boomers do have more time. All that being said, I know I left out other representation of the senators as a whole and the House of Representatives as a whole, but let me know if you're interested in that and I can further explore it in a future video. Yeah. Thank you for watching. If you found anything interesting, please give this video a thumbs up. Yeah, I wanna mention a fun idea I have. To commemorate our first silent generation president, an idea is that everyone could take a video of themselves with headphones on, could be AirPods, whatever, doing a silent disco. So do a little dance and hashtag it silent generation disco. And if you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe. And I will see you next time. Some various news outlets have called him one of the most, called Cheney, one of the most vice, I wonder if that is how you pronounce it. Pronounce what? Stephen Breyer, Stephen Breyer. And Boomer John Boner. But <laughs> before Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just get tired sometimes. Do we have like an American flag or something? No. Oh.